Thanks for joining me. My name is Adeola. I am a playwright. I am a novelist. I have published two books, The Waiting Room and Colors of Love. The Waiting Room is a collection of plays. My third book is about to be out in a couple of weeks, and I'll be talking about that in my next video. I am also a child care provider. I am a wife, I am a mother, and I am a Christian. And if you're watching this video, I am your sister. Why am I your sister? Because we live in the same society. We relate with the same issues every day. Some of these issues have caught my attention. Issues like culture, Christianity, the search for greener pastures, hopes and aspirations, love, family life, your life as a single, and many more. You know, I've caught my attention. These are the things I write about. And they are the things that we both relate with in our society. Why am I making this video? I'm making this video because it is one of the series of the videos that I will be making. And in these videos, I will be featuring myself reading my published stories so that we can rub minds, so that I can bring out some of these issues I talked about earlier and we can rub minds. So, if you're still with me, I want you to stay with me because I'm about to start reading. Colors of Love. This is what it looks like, the front cover, the back cover, and the binder. All right, I must confess the very first time that I received this book, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the color and the picture and I just loved it. And I have to ask myself, did I really write this book? Yes, I did. I am the author, see my name, written boldly on it. And I'm proud to say that. You might be out there um, trying to do something like this. You can never be too ready. If you're ready, then you're ready. Do you have a story? Then you are ready. I will be leaving links in the comment section that can help aspiring authors. That can also help you if you're aspiring to be a publisher. I will also leave links to where you can purchase my book, um, Colors of Love and The Waiting Room. You can purchase my books from outskirtspress.com slash Adeola Uyukola. Um, you can download an instant copy of the ebook. You can also um, download the Kindle. It's also in a Kindle format. And it is, of course, in a paperback um, um, format. So you can download from my website or you can buy from Amazon.com. You can buy from Barnes & Noble. And if you visit my website, you will see a whole lot of other um, online stores that you can purchase my book from. So with that being said, I just want to say this. I have received questions like, um, the stories you write about, are you writing about yourself? No, I am not writing about myself. I'm writing about issues that happen in our society. Even though I write out of inspiration, I have eyes I can see, I have ears I can hear, and I'm able to relate with all of these issues. And I'm so happy that my writing is so original that you think it is a real life story. I am so happy. So I want you to come along with me as I read this story. I am going to start reading from the prologue page. And as you can see, the prologue is written in the form of a poem. Why did I just write it in the form of a poem? I was just being creative. And it has also allowed me to be able to compress my ideas into that one single poem. And if you are able to understand what you're about to read, you know about. All right, come along, let's read together. In the shadow of love lies the secret of life. My life I give to you, never to take it back. In the shadow of love lies the lost truth. Your life you give to me, just for a while. If love is true, so hate is lie. Then separate them, so that I can choose love. Is this love? Is this true? Let us go deep down to get the right meaning. Life is too short. 
to believe in agony. Life is too short to believe in hatred. Show me love. Never deprive me of my innocence. Then run away. If you do, my heart goes with you, leaving me empty in a lonely world. Stay with me. Be truthful to me. Stay with me. Be gentle with me. I am yours because you asked. I am yours because you showed me love. You have led me to the sweetest side of life. You have fed me with delicious food for my heart. So where shall I go when you leave me? So what shall I eat when you abandon me? My heart thirsts for you. My heart hungers for you. My heart hungers for you. You have planted your love in my heart. It has grown with the deep roots. It has flourished like a palm tree. It has bloomed like the flower. I can smell the fragrance. How can I drag it back in? How can I replace you? How can I survive this? How? 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 Mm. You have heard it. I have read it. What do you think? The prologue talks about love. And it also talks about hatred. Now, let's do this. Let's put love and hate side by side. They are supposed to be two parallel lines that should never meet. But is that always the case? No. Because a lot of times, two people fall in love and they say, Oh, I love you. I love you too much. I will do this for you. I can never leave you. People go about professing their love like that. But eventually we find out that it is only one partner who put the whole of herself or the whole of himself into the relationship. The other partner only do a little bit, breezes in and then breezes out. And then when he does that, the other partner feels bad. The other partner is hurt. The other partner is down. So down, some people don't ever get out of it. But I want to tell you this. If you find yourself in a situation like that, you need to get out of it. It is not the end of the world. Nobody in this world has the right to put you in that situation. You need to get yourself out and be up again. But if you are the other partner who goes about breaking people's hearts, I want you to stop it. I want you to stop what you're doing. What do you gain from hurting other people's feelings? But there are some people who break people's hearts and they say they're doing it with the right intention because they have a good reason for it. What do you think? I want you to leave me comments. I want us to talk about this. Is it right to break people's hearts? Why do people break other people's hearts? What are some things that causes it? I'm not just going to leave it with the man to woman relationship. It also happens in the church. People preach Christ. They go out there saying Jesus loves you. Jesus is love. I love you with the love of you know, love of Christ. You are my sister. You are my brother. I love you. They say one thing and they are behaving in another way. Their character, their behavior does not rhyme with what they preach. It shouldn't be so. If you are one of the people who do this, I want you to know that you are confusing people out there. And you are not just confusing people. You are also pushing people away from the church. It shouldn't be so. When you preach love, you should stay loving people. You should stop doing things that hurt other people's feelings. Better still, don't say anything. If you know, you cannot live up to what you say. So, I'm going to leave you with this today. I've, I've talked a lot during the introduction section. Until next time, I'll leave you another video. Um, if you like this video, I would like for you to subscribe so that the next time I drop another one, you will be notified. I want you to subscribe, I want you to like, I want you to share, and I want you to comment. Looking forward to hearing for you, from you. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I say hello, 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 hello. Thanks for joining me again today. My name is Adeola. You're welcome to the second episode of All Our Books Readers Review. 
If you did not watch the last episode, I have a link in the description column for you. So you can click on this link and watch the last video. In the last video, I read the prologue of the book, Colors of Love. And after reading, I was able to ask a question. Why do people break other people's hearts? Also, I promise to give an update about my third book that will be coming out pretty soon. When? Well, my update is this. I will not be releasing one book, but I'll be releasing two books next month. Two children books next month. And I'm sure your children will enjoy you reading the books to them. You will also enjoy reading them. And I'll have more to tell you very soon. I will have the trailer released very soon so that you can at least have a glimpse into what you are about to see or you're about to start buying or you're about to start reading. All right. Uh, I would also like to encourage you because we are all in this pandemic together and we will get out of it together. And it is my prayer that when this is over, pretty soon we will come out stronger than we were when it all started. With that being said, I would like for us, I would like for you to sit tight and listen to me read chapter one, the reunion of colors of love. If you have the book, you can take it out. You can read it together. If you do not, you will listen and uh, I will not take your time. I will read and as usual, I will bring out some points from my reading. She sat on the porch looking at the leaves falling from the trees. She remembered the lesson she watched her sister teach her kindergarten class about the different colors of leaves in the fall. Red, brown, yellow, orange are falling, making a beautiful sight as the wind blew. The wind blew a red one onto her lap and she smiled. Her face gradually turned sad. It reminded her of her love life, a sad story. She scrunched it up in her fist and let the wind blow off the crumbs through her fingers. Her mind flashed back to how it all started. In the woods, under the trees, the laughter and sweet emotions, warm kisses and sweet embrace. It dawned on her that it wasn't all a sad story. There were moments of happiness as well. She stood up and took a walk toward the small gates in her yard. She saw two boys riding bicycles on the streets and laughing, oblivious of a moving vehicle. The car drove slowly behind them until there was enough space for it to drive off beside them. Thank God for patient drivers and intermittent humps. A woman yelled out from a house not too far away, telling them to get on the sidewalk. She was most likely their mother. They heeded the advice immediately as another car came driving by. She took a walk down Chesapeake Street. After walking for about five minutes, she realized the need for a jacket. It wasn't as warm as she thought. The fall weather was coming. It was just as sunny as summer yesterday. She thought aloud. As she turned around, she heard someone call her. Before she could decide if it was real or not, she heard her name again. Yeni, Yeni. She turned around and saw Ralph running toward her, speaking of the devil. Too late to ignore him, she stood there and waited for him to join her. Hello, Yeni, Ralph said, panting. Hello, Yeni replied. You were walking towards me and I was patiently waiting. Then you turned back. I wasn't walking toward you. I didn't see you at all. Well, I thought you did. And then you turned back. He said, Okay. Ah! She sneezed before she could get the words out. She did again and again. Bless you, he said, concerned. Thank you, she replied between sneezes. I was going back to get a jacket when you called me. Now, if you would excuse me, it's obvious I need one. She walked away from him back into her yard. Ralph watched her leave with his mouth slightly open. 
she decided not to go back outside, not after that encounter with Ralph. Ralph lived on the next streets to hers. She met him on one of her many walks in the neighborhood. He requested to join her in a walk that day. She let him, thinking that if she had company, it would help her to forget about her sad love story. She saw him as a needed distraction. He didn't see it that way though. He wanted a girlfriend. <laughs> the last thing she needed right now. He had tried to kiss her the other day and she had slapped him right across the face. Ooh. He was shocked and furious. She had not spoken to him since then, and that was two weeks ago. Yeni owed him an apology. He must have thought she was interested in him because she never said no to all his invitations to walk. She lay on the couch. She sneezed some more. She would never go outside without a jacket. Not anymore. I am sorry this is all I can read today. Next week I will continue reading chapter one. Hopefully I will be able to finish. Uh, but I will continue reading chapter one by the next um video so quickly a few things i want to bring out from what i have read first we are still in the lockdown season and if you are a mom or a dad or as a family you are all together in the house and you have two three four maybe even five children in the same house it could be overwhelming take walks take family walks Take your children outside, take a nature walk, take pictures of birds, count birds flying, talk about the leaves, talk about the trees, talk about the animals you see as you take your walk. 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes every day or maybe, you know, two, three, four days in a week as you desire. This will help to ease the, you know, the tension, the frustration you are beginning to feel as being at home all the time. If you have children just picking up words, they can learn new words as you talk to them on your walks. Talk about leaves, talk about, give them new words to say, give them new sentences to say. All of this will help them because the same way you're feeling bored is the same way they sometimes feel bored. So going outside is just another way to keep yourselves together. It's also good for you. Because you can meditate if you're doing a walk all by yourself you can take that time to meditate you can take that time to even pray you can take that time to listen to music and by the time you come back from your walk you're a better person try it if you have not you'll find out it works all right now let's talk about she slapped him right across the face Woo. have you ever as a lady slapped a man right across the face just for asking you out now it may not be your fault some men have ridiculous ways of asking some ladies out <laughs> so if a man had irritated you with the way he asked you out and you had to slap him please let us know say something in the comment section and if you're a man, if a lady had ever done that to you, please tell us how you feel. Leave us a comment. And, you know, things happen. You know, things you don't expect happen. Should a woman, for whatever reason, have to slap a man just for being asked out? All right. As we can see, Yen is already feeling bad about what she did. Let me know what you think. Now, if you like this video, I would like for you to please subscribe, like, and share okay and leave a comment and until next time when i bring you another video take this time to buy a copy of colors of love or the waiting room check out the links in the description column until next time bye hello thank you so much for joining me my name is adeola you're welcome to the third episode of all our books readers review wow the last episode got so many views I couldn't believe it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your word of encouragement. You all are the best. Thank you so much. All right. With that being said, I'm about to go um, back into reading Colors of Love. But before I do so, I quickly want to say 
that um, we need to go over what we did the last time. So quick summary. We've, uh, we discovered two characters the last time, Jenny and Ralph. So both of them usually take walks. Ralph usually joins Jenny on her walks. Jenny allows Ralph because she sees Ralph as a needed distraction from her heavy heart. At least let me have someone to chat with. I will forget what I'm thinking about. But Ralph, on the other hand, sees Jenny as a potential girlfriend. So he pulls the fast one on her. He tries to kiss her. Then he gives him a slap. And that was where we stopped reading. So I want to say something quickly about that. You know, that experience is usually what happens these days. The random kiss here and there. Um, I find myself spending the night in his house, a few moments with him, things like that. And you think you are started a relationship. Hmm. You need to define that relationship. You need to talk about it. Are you in for a one night stand? Are you in for a fling? Don't just let feelings talk. Let your mouth, let both of you have a conversation about what you are into. If you do not want your relationship to head for the rocks. All right. You just have to be on the same page. You know, you just have to. If not, you know, anything can happen. All right, so let me continue reading Colors of Love. If you have your copy, bring your copy out. Let's read together. If you do not have your copy, go to outskatespress.com slash Adeola Oyekola to download an instant copy of your ebook, download your Kindle edition, or place an order for your paperback copy. You can go to Amazon.com to get a copy. You can go to Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, or any major online store. You will definitely find Colors of Love there. Better still, leave me a comment in the comment section and I will reach out to you. All my links are in the description below. All right, let's continue reading. So I was uh, start reading from where we stopped the last time, which is on page four, and I'll be reading from the middle of the page. All right. She lay on the couch and sneezed some more. She would never go outside without a jacket. Not anymore. On a second thought, it might not be a jacket issue. It might be allergies. She had always associated sneezes with the cold or the cold weather. Her sister made her understand that she must be allergic to something in the neighborhood, trees or plants of some kind. She had never heard about anyone being allergic to trees or flowers until her sister told her so. She thought about the different kinds of trees she'd played around as a child and about the various trees in her neighborhood back home. How come she never had allergies then? How come Polly never caused her eyes to be red and swollen in her home country? America is so different from Nigeria. Allergic reaction, my foot. I need to go back home. She exclaimed aloud. She dozed off and woke to the sound of her phone ringing. She looked at the phone to see who the caller was, but it was an unknown number. She did not answer it. When the phone stopped ringing, she switched it off and went back to sleep. She needed the sleep before her nieces came home from school only an hour away. She must have been sleeping for another 10 minutes when the doorbell rang. This is not my day, she said as she dragged herself to the door. It was Carrie, her best friend. Carrie, she screamed as she threw herself on her. They hugged and laughed and hugged some more. How did you find me? Jenny asked. Well, don't I always find you? Of course you do, Jenny said between laughter as her mind flashed back to their hide and seek games in middle school. Come on in, she said. Good to have you around. Oh, my pleasure, girlfriend, said Carrie. What do I offer you? asked Yen. Oh, my Yen is something. Always courteous. When will you change? asked, said Carrie. Very good to hear you say my full name. Haven't heard it like that in a long time. So you stop the flattery, Carrie. I should say the same thing about you. Oh, come on, Fee. That's not flattery. It's the truth, Carrie said, rolling her eyes. That's another thing you should stop doing. Rolling those big eyes of yours. They both laughed. All right, girlfriend, Yenny said. 
orange juice and Ritz crackers, okay? Perfect, she said. As Yeti walked away, her friend stared at her without blinking, and she said to herself, she has seen better days. Her heart sorrowed for her friend. Yeni was a gorgeous girl. Way back in Africa where her friendship began, she was the sense of attraction for men. It didn't matter what hairstyle or clothing style she had on, men would ask her out a couple of times before they noticed her friends. She was a five feet six inches with an average weight of 138 pounds, which was about 62.5 kg. She was a tall, slim girl and light-skinned. She had long eyelashes, long nose, black eyes, and her lips were just the right size for her face. Not too big, not too small. Now, Carrie thought, she surely must be only 100 pounds, if not less. She had lost so much weight, the laughter could not hide the sorrow in her eyes. Oh, how Carrie's heart yearned for her. She had buried her sorrow in her heart for a long time. Hopefully, she would talk about it. Yeni invited Carrie into her room where she had set out the refreshments. We can stay here all day without disturbance. I hope you planned on sleeping over. Of course, I will. We have a lot to talk about. The two friends were in an intense discussion when there was a knock on the door. So I'm going to stop reading here today. And uh, quickly, I want to bring out two things. The first thing is this. When you live, when you change your environment, or you are living in diaspora, there are certain things in that environment that are challenging for you. There are things that you have not been used to before. So this was what um, the experience Yeni had about sneezing, about the uh, allergic reaction she was having to her environment. So what are some things? You know, if you are living in diaspora or you just change the environment, what environments? What are some things that are challenging for you? Another thing I want to talk about is the benefits of talking to your childhood friend or your best friend or your very good friend. You know, sometimes it could be lonely if you have not talked to someone for a long time. Maybe not talk to someone. I mean, it's not like there are not people around you, but there are people you will really want to have a hearty discussion with or chat with. You know, give somebody a call. You don't have to share your secrets if you don't want to. You know, talk about nothing, talk about something, talk about things that will make you laugh, that will make you feel so good about yourself. It is really healthy. And you know what I mean? We have girl chats, you know, we can talk makeup, we can talk hair, we can talk fashion, just a little distraction from whatever you think is, you know, making you feel bad. You know, talk to someone. And let me hear what you think. Leave me a comment. Say something, and if you like this video and you want more of it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, comment, and share. The Lord bless you as you do so. Until next time, this is all I have for you today. Have a wonderful time with your family. Bye. Hi, here I am again today, bringing to you all our books readers review. If you're joining me for the First time, my name is Adeola, and you all are welcome to the fourth episode of All Our Books Readers Review. Wow, fourth episode. All right, so uh, what do I do here? What I do is I read stories written by Adeola Oyekola. And uh, we have started the reading of Colors of Love. We have read the prologue and we are reading chapter one. And I Hopefully think I will be able to finish reading chapter one today. All right. Um, on the last episode, Carrie comes visiting Yeni. All right. So we're going to continue reading from there. If you have your book, bring it out. Let's read together. If you are yet to get a copy and you would like to get a copy, you can go to outgetspress.com slash adiola where you can download your instant copy of the ebook or the Kindle edition. Or you can also order your uh, paperback. Better still, you can order from Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Goodreads, Books A Million, or any major online store. You will definitely get a copy from there. And you can leave me a comment in the comment section, and I'll reach out to you 
on how you will receive a copy. Also, if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read for free. Okay, so all my links are down below, the links to where you can get my books and the links also to uh, the previous episodes of ORR. The Lord bless you as you do so. All right, so let's continue to read from page six. And I will start from the last line. All right. The two friends were in an intense discussion when there was a knock on the door. Yeni, I'm back, said to me. Welcome, sis. You may come in. The door is not locked, answered Yeni. The door opened to reveal an elegant lady whom Carrie instantly knew was Yeni's sister. The resemblance was striking. They could have been identical twins. But for the difference in weight, obviously, Yeni was slimmer than, a, than her older sister. You have a visitor? To me, asked surprised. Yes, my best friend Carrie, all the way from Houston, all the way from Houston, Texas. Carrie finished for her. Texas? Yeni questioned. Yes, I've been around for quite some time. Actually, about a year. Hmm, we'll talk about that later. Yeni turns to her sister. Like I was saying, meet my best friend Carrie from Houston, Texas. We've been friends since our childhood. We attended the same schools and shared a lot of experiences. Carrie, meet the sweetest sister in the world to me. Nice to finally meet you, Auntie, said Carrie. Same here, replied to me. Yeni looked at both in wonder. Let me enlighten you, Yeni, Carrie said. I got Auntie Tumi's phone number from your mom in Nigeria, but couldn't contact her until a few weeks ago when I found the piece of paper I wrote it on hidden in one of my purses. We both promised to keep the VC a secret from you until I arrived. She finished with a wink to Tumi. You both got me. I could never have thought. I'll leave you girls to catch up on lost time, to me said. The house is all yours. The kids are home for the night. They have a sleepover with their friends. Fantastic, said Yen. They all laughed as Tumi closed the door behind her. The kids are terrible, Yen informed Carrie after her sister left. They'll be everywhere in minutes you wouldn't believe they are all girls when you see the burst of energy well i still want to meet them said carrie you will and they'll be back tomorrow you said you'd been around for about a year in texas yes carrie said i came with my fiance tell me something yenny said excitedly so carrie began we met at a friend's party in Nigeria and we just clicked. He was on vacation from the U.S. and I was getting ready to come back into the U.S. He stayed a little longer for me to get my traveling papers together. And here we are, she finished, smiling. I am so happy for you, Carrie, Yeni said, looking at her lovingly. I would like to meet the man who could put such a sparkle in my friend's eyes. You'll meet very soon because you'll be visiting, Harry said with a big emphasis. Sure, I will, Yeni said excitedly. I wish I had known you were close by. I would have been visiting. Now, Harry said, it's your turn to talk. I want to know everything. I mean everything. Yeni sighed. Started to talk, then stopped. Her countenance changed, her eyes welled up with tears, and she tried to talk again. Then she burst into tears. Her friend held her in her arms and let her cry on her shoulder for a long time. Then she gave her a napkin to wipe her face and blew her nose. She offered some water from the tray of refreshments set on the small table beside the bed. She refused the water but took the napkin and shed a few more tears. I don't know where to start, she said after wiping her face. 
you can start from anywhere. Flashbacks are acceptable. So she began to tell her tale. I was in the lecture room that fateful day at exactly 8 a.m. when the lecture was supposed to start. He was the only one in the class waiting for the lecture. I was surprised at the empty classroom, so I asked him, where is everybody? I have no idea was his response. I pulled out my phone and gave you a call, and you told me the lecture was called off. You thought I received the message. Out of the whole class, only two of us didn't receive the cancellation notice. He said with irritation, that was when I took a closer look at him. I had never met him before. It was our third year, and I was surprised that I wouldn't have known a cosmete of mine for three years. He introduced himself and he told me that he was carrying over the course as a minor course. That explained his strange face. I was mad at myself for waking up early to get to class. I could have slept for another hour or two. I mentioned this as we both exited the class and his response was, there is a reason for everything. That was the beginning of my mystery. We walked together for a long time, talking like old friends. We stopped by a restaurant and had breakfast together. And I found myself getting attracted to him. All right. I just finished reading chapter one of Colors of Love. What do you think? Please leave me a comment. In this episode, Yenya receives a surprise from Carrie. And the surprise was planned by Carrie and Tumi, Yenny's sister. So do you have someone around you you want to give a surprise birthday party or a surprise um phone call or a surprise gift or a surprise visit? It's always good, you know, to lighten up our days by just making each other smile or laugh or make another person feel special. So if you have someone like that today, make someone special. And I would like to receive comments about um, Colors of Love Chapter 1. I want you to tell me who has some characters we've been introduced to. At least name four characters that we have been introduced to in Chapter 1. And tell me two things about Yoni. And if you get the questions right, you either get um, a, a copy of Colors of Love or the dollar equivalent that will be your gift all right let me know what you think and if you like this video and you would like to see more of it please subscribe like comment and share the lord bless you as you do so and i will see you in my next video you have a fantastic time bye Hello there. Thanks for joining me again today. My name is Adeola. You're welcome to the fifth episode of All Our Books Readers Review. A big congratulations to the winner of the last of the gifts in the last video I made. I am so happy that a lot of people watch my video from the beginning all the way to the end because that was the only way she was able to answer the questions because she waited till the end and she heard that I asked the questions and that there was a gift if she got the questions right so she was able to type the answer into the comment section and she got the gift congratulations one more time and thank you so much for watching so I want to give a big shout out to my mom who celebrated her birthday on August 25th and to that effect I have released a new title on August 25th, be on the lookout for details. Also, another big shout out to my darling husband whose birthday is on August 28th. And to that effect, I have released another title on August 28th, which is today. But due to technical issues, I will not be able to share more information about these two books, what they are about and the links to where you can get them. But pretty, pretty soon, hopefully in a couple of days, I'll be able to give you more information about these books. Thank you for being on the lookout. So with that being said, let's go back into reading because this is why I am here. I'm still reading Colors of Love 
and I finished reading chapter one in my last video. If you are yet to watch these videos, please check out the links I posted down below. Um, you'll be able to listen to the previous video so you will know where we are coming from. And also, if you have not purchased a copy of Colors of Love, the links are down below to where you can get them. You can try out Amazon. I mean, you can check out upskatespress.com slash Adiola Oyekola. That's your first stop to buy a copy. Or you can check other online bookstores like Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. And if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read for free. All right. So pick up a copy. And if you have one already, let's start to read together. Chapter 2, I'm on page 12. Alan was a handsome young man. I don't have to describe him to you in great detail. Tall, light-skinned, well-shaped beard, curly hair, you name it. Everything attracted me to him. I had never been that close to a handsome man. He usually scared me until I met Alan. If I had only listened to you, if I had listened to my instincts, but I didn't. I was ready to enjoy the romance I believed was about to begin. We were friends for a while and then we started dating. The day you met him, you told me it didn't seem like it would last. I disagreed with you. Twelve months into our relationship, you gave up your doubts and accepted him as my boyfriend. He succeeded in fooling both of us. Then one day, I was in his room when his phone rang. He didn't answer it. Then it rang again, and I gave him the what's going on look. So he answered it. To the caller, he said he was in class, and he would call back later. I was shocked. Alan, you're not in class. I need an explanation. He said that was his cousin from his father's side and he didn't want her to take away from our precious time together. I believed him. I was madly in love with him. We finished school and we were all posted to different places for our National Youth Service Corps. I was at Enugu State. He was in Zamfara State. I was impressed when he redeployed to Enugu to be with me. Everyone believed in our blossoming love. Even my parents had to accept him. We went on a surprise outing one day only to find out he was taking me to see his mom. Who just got back from America. I should have known he redeployed not for my sake but because of her. Since her residence was in Enugu State Capital where I served. His mom was surprised to see me. I sensed the kind of coldness, but Alan said it was because she was meeting me for the first time. He received that call again. This time, at the end of the call, he said, Me too. That seemed suspicious to me. I asked him who the caller was. He said that was his cousin again. He received the call again another day. This time, he said he was with a friend. You can't tell her you're with your girlfriend? I asked, getting a little jealous. He said no, because she would go ahead and tell her dad and he would think my boyfriend was having a relationship that would keep him in Nigeria and he would never go back to America, where he was needed to take over leadership of his parents' company. Then I asked him about what would become of our relationship after he left. He looked straight into my eyes dipped his hand into his pocket, brought out a case, and opened it. There was a ring in it. He knelt on one knee and asked me to marry him. That was a great moment for me. Tears welled up in my eyes and rolled down my face, just like right now. I asked him a question in response. I looked straight into his eyes and said, you just said you were about to leave me for the States. How will it work if I marry you? He said some sweet words to me. I accepted his proposal. He promised to marry me before he traveled back to the States. Then he would process my visa and I could join him. The plan was so exciting to me until I found out that I was pregnant. 
All the time she was narrating her story, Yeni was standing by the window looking at the leaves falling from the trees. She turned around to face Gary and she said, You wonder why a Christian should be pregnant outside marriage? Carrie answered, yes. Hmm, Jenny continued. I was a Christian, still a Christian. I was the fellowship of Christian students, FCS, women's leader, during my service year. Although I didn't plan on getting pregnant, I had sex with my boyfriend all the time. I did it because I wanted to, but I loved God. I still do. I guess I never let go when I fall in love, she said with a little laugh. <laughs> but Carrie Cotton, how easy was it for you to be a Christian walking with God and still sleeping with your boyfriend without a guilty conscience? I had a guilty conscience, but I couldn't resist him. And I didn't feel like it affected my relationship with God. One thing I learned from it though is that when he broke up with me, if I had not been that close to him, I would not have hurt as much as I did. That would also have meant that I didn't give the whole of my love. I gave him more than he deserved. Some people do it, and I guess they end up marrying the same man because they were meant to be together. But in my case, I messed up my life. I am not over it yet. So I will stop reading right here on page 15 and will continue in my next video. Yeni has started telling her story. This will lead me back to the very first video that I made when I was reading the prologue and I said something about in relationships. Sometimes a party puts in the whole of his or her love and the other puts in only a little bit and that makes it so easy for that party to put in the little bit to breeze out without getting hurt. Why the one who puts in the whole of himself or herself gets hurt? So, what are we talking about here? When you are in a relationship, I don't care if you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, if you're in a relationship and you're beginning to have questions, you need to ask your questions. And when you ask questions, if the answers you're getting do not seem real, if the answers do not sound like they are answering your questions, I think you need to begin to retrace your steps. One after the other, you take your steps backward, out of that relationship before you get hurt. So this is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, share, and comment. I'm waiting for your comments. If you agree with, agreed with what I said, please leave me a comment. If you do not agree, still leave me comments. I will like more comments on the YouTube channel more than other social media pages where I post the links. Thank you so much for being there, for watching this video. And until next time, bye.